Well, hello, this is Jonathan Wright, uh, Dr. Wright, and yes, I'm a physician and medical director here at the Tahoma Clinic. Uh, what we'll be going over tonight is vitamin C. Yes, as one of two of the most essential vitamins we can all have great health benefits from, and that we really, really need. Now, don't we need every vitamin there is? Well, sure we do. But after you hear about vitamin C, you'll see why it, you'll understand, excuse me, uh, why it ranks as actually number one. Well, here's why. Even though this is about vitamin C, it's related to a genetic disease. No kidding. Did you know that you have a genetic disease and I have a genetic disease and every other human out there has a genetic disease? Yes, and it says so in the textbooks of genetics and the textbooks of pediatrics that are taught in medical schools. It actually says so. Did you know, though, that most other living critters don't have that genetic disease? Well, dogs, cats, elephants, rats, snakes, chimpanzees, gorillas, all the other so-called primates. Oddly enough, most fish do, and a few species of bats. But if you look at all the living critters, they don't have that genetic disease. What is the genetic disease they don't have? They don't have the disease that makes vitamin C from the outside necessary for humans. And like I said, gorillas and apes and orangutans and maybe a guinea pig and some bats and most of the fish. What am I talking about? Most other critters make vitamin C in their own bodies. Yes. And it isn't a vitamin if you can make it in your own body, can you? No. They make it in their livers and kidneys. And so that animal, every day from the time of its conception to the time it dies, its own body makes enough vitamin C. And it adjusts the rate of vitamin C according to what the body needs. It's automatic. Well, this has all been very heavily researched. And if you go look it up, you'll find there's a series of six enzymes. Enzymes are little chemical structures in the body that transform one thing into another, into another, into another. And there's a series of six enzymes that start with blood sugar, of all things, glucose. And out the other end comes vitamin C. Well, humans are missing the sixth enzyme. And again, so are the other species, the very small minority of species that don't make vitamin C in their own bodies. All of us have the first five enzymes. We don't have the sixth one. And that's one of the definitions of a genetic disease. We're missing an enzyme which depends on some, oops, missing DNA in humans in order to get a certain job done in our bodies. Yeah. Now, why is that so important to health? If we don't have enough vitamin C, we just die of scurvy. And nobody dies of scurvy anymore. So isn't this a little bit of a, oh, you might call it a vitamin C tempest in a vitamin C pot? Not really, because here's what happens when an animal is given a toxin. Its internal production, and this is an animal like a dog or a cat or a rat or a gorilla, or uh, not a gorilla, I said the wrong thing there, or a snake or an alligator, all of whom make vitamin C in their own bodies, when they're given toxins, the liver goes into overdrive and it makes twice, three times, 10 times, as much as 15 to 20 times as much vitamin C as it did before it got the toxin. And it keeps making that toxin go away with the help of extra vitamin C production until the toxin is gone and then it settles back down to where it was. You give an animal a carcinogen and the same thing happens. Its liver or if its kidneys, if it happens to be a bird, goes into super overdrive and makes all kinds of vitamin C, except I keep calling it vitamin C, don't I? Uh-uh. What these animals make is called ascorbate and we have named it for humans vitamin C because we have to stay, have it to stay alive, which is the definition of a vitamin. It helps us stay alive. But in animals, it's a common biochemical made every day and made according to the need of the body. If that animal is kept up without sleep, stressed, whatever, that animal's liver makes or kidneys make a whole bunch more vitamin C. Now, how often are we exposed to toxins? or possibly carcinogens, or stress, or other things that impact our bodies that need detoxifying. 
Did I hear anybody say every day? Yeah. So the fact that we're not dying of scurvy doesn't mean as we're healthy as we can be because what happens when you or I or any other of the small minority of critters who don't make their own vitamin C, what happens when we're exposed? Those first five enzymes, they start going like crazy and they try to make vitamin C, but the sixth enzyme is missing and they can't do it. Our bodies try, but because of our genetic disease, we can't make ascorbate, which we've named vitamin C. All right, someone, some researcher actually followed gorillas around in the forest. Remember gorillas in the tropical forest, of course. Remember gorillas don't make vitamin C either? And what they found was in the food of the average gorilla, no kidding, I guess there's an average gorilla, um, they ate the equivalent in human weight equivalent to that gorilla over there. Wow, I'm not weight equivalent. Yeah, they did the math, okay. They ate as much as three grams of vitamin C a day on the average. Three grams? Yeah. So they had plenty of vitamin C. And as far as we know, people were first early skeletons. The very first people were found in tropical areas. So probably they got a lot of vitamin C too. Yeah. But what happens when we're not living in the tropics anymore and we're not taking vitamin C? Here comes the toxin. Our bodies can't get rid of it as easy. Here comes a carcinogen. Here comes a whole bunch of stress. Our bodies can't handle it the way that it should be handled for optimal health, which means that from the time a child is born until we're not going to be here anymore, in order to stay optimally healthy, we should be using a vitamin C supplement. And how much? Well, remember that gorilla, a minimum of probably three grams a day for an adult, less for children. But aren't we under stress a lot? If we live anywhere near anything that could be toxic, let's say a big city, aren't we getting toxins in all the time? What about carcinogens? Well, Linus Pauling, the famous Nobel Prize winner, he said, and I go right along with him, that we should ask our bodies how much vitamin C we need. Huh? How do we do that? Well, he pointed out that we can take one gram a day, two grams a day, three grams a day, four grams a day. And by the way, folks, you probably know this, but vitamin C should never be taken all at once during the daytime. It's a so-called water-soluble vitamin. Out it goes. So we should take some in the morning, some in the evening at a minimum, and then perhaps another time during the day if we can and we have the time. Increasing the vitamin C. When our bodies can't take it up anymore from the guts, guess what? We become socially unacceptable. I think you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we pop too much gas, let's put it politely. And we might even get loose bowels. And that's more than our bodies can take up. So he says take it to what's called bowel tolerance. How much vitamin C can the bowels handle? Or bowel, whatever it is. How much can they do? And what people have told me is, oh, usually I can take a four or five grams of vitamin C a day with no problem. But when I feel like I'm coming down with that bad flu that went through here last winter, I could take up to 25 grams of vitamin C a day and my bowel said thank you. They didn't say anything else, not a bit of noise. They just said, thank you, I'm taking it up. And guess what? I got better than the rest of everybody who didn't take that much vitamin C. Vitamin C is one of the best detoxifying agents there is. We've given it to folks who have come in just, oh, oh food poisoned and feeling bad. And 50 grams of vitamin C in an IV bottle, which sort of gets around the guts, in an hour or two, they're feeling fine. It's a detoxifying agent. It opposes carcinogens. It helps us against stress. And folks, since we have this as unfortunately a genetic heritage, if you want to be a crocodile in your last lifetime, you won't have to take any vitamin C to stay healthy, or maybe a snake or a goat or whatever. But to stay as healthy as we can for as long as we can and detoxify things and to handle stress, we really need to be exploring how much vitamin C ascorbate, same thing, because our bodies can't make it, that we need, and settle into a routine of so much a day and when we feel like we're under stress or we want to cleanse the body or whatever, escalate that vitamin C. When we're coming down with something, escalate that ascorbate. Please, our livers try to do this for us. Our livers are saying, we can't help it. We don't have that last enzyme. But every time we're stressed or toxed or carcinogened, 
our livers try, try, try. They get those first five enzymes going. They can't come out the other end with ascorbate vitamin C. So we have to remember to help them. And this is a hard habit to get into, I understand. We have to do another thing to stay as healthy as we can as for as long as we can. Yeah, I know. And we have a choice. You don't have to stay as healthy as we can for as long as we can, do we? We can just deteriorate sooner. Well, one of the big deals for staying as healthy as long as we can is to mimic what nature does, what creation does, with all of those living critters, which is the vast majority, who make their own vitamin C, in their, except it's called ascorbate because it's not a vitamin for them, in their own bodies, and don't even have to worry about taking this stuff to stay as healthy as they can for as long as they can. And this is why vitamin C is number one on the essential for a good, long, healthy life. And adjusting it up and down according to what our insides say and according to the circumstances is a very good idea. Well, that's, that's it, folks. But one other thing, if you want to read more about this, go to your used book search engine, and you'll find an excellent book published in 1972, which is just as relevant today as it was then. It's called Vitamin C, The Healing Factor. And it's by Irwin, I-R-W-I-N, Stone. Or maybe it's called The Healing Factor of Vitamin C. One way or the other, that's the book. You can still get it as a used book. And it goes into this into much greater depth and detail, including a lot of experiments that show that what I'm talking about is fact. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Next week, we'll be talking about this second really essential vitamin, vitamin D. Thank you very much for watching and listening. And just incidentally, if you want to read another source of information about this that isn't as long as a book, it'll be appearing as an article in the newsletter I happen to write called Green Medicine um, in the July or August issue. It'll be about vitamin C, which all those other animals would call ascorbate because for them it isn't a vitamin. But for us, it is a vitamin and we need to pay a lot of attention to it. We would be much healthier if we did. Thank you.